Now that we uh, understand what the integral tells us, and we know some techniques for uh, integration, we're going to look at some applications of the integral in the context of some quasi-real-world problems, I guess. Um, so here we, uh, we have a rate, and it's the rate of potato consumption in a particular country, and it's modeled by this function. And the units on that are millions of bushels per year. So that'll be important. And T is years since the beginning of 1970. So the question is something about of accumulation. How many bushels uh, were consumed? I think I missed a word in there. Consumed. From the beginning of 1972 to the end of 1973. Well, the uh, one thing to keep in mind is that this function is a rate, right? It's a rate of change. Um, similar to velocity. Now, when you integrate velocity, you get um, you get change in position, or maybe total distance traveled if it's all if your velocity is always uh, positive. So this is kind of analogous. This function here is analogous to velocity in that sense. And one thing to think about, or one way to think about this, is we're we're going to use an integral because we're accumulating bushels or millions of bushels of uh, of potatoes, and when you put in this function here, it's easy to make sense of what's going on if you think in terms of units. So the units on this we know are millions of bushels per year. So I'm just going to put bushels per year. And then this change in time is going to be years. And so those cancel and you'll be summing up bushels. So it makes sense just to, you know, place that function right into the integral. Now, in terms of the limits of integration, it says from the beginning of 1972, so this this function begins, uh, t equals zero is when the year is 1970. So then in 1972, that would be t equals two. And then you got 1973, and then 1974, and since it says the beginning of 1972 to the end of 1973, we know we're integrating from 2 to 4. All right, and that's, that's it. So setting up the integral wasn't, um, was really the main, uh, the main issue with this problem. Um, you definitely could just use your calculator for this. So if you put in to y1 your function, and then integrate, you end up getting seven point zero six about seven point zero six four millions of bushels. Now that's not a rate. We don't say per year. It's just that you just summed up the total number of bushel, uh, number of bushels. Um, okay, and so that's this is one very easy application of the integral. Remember, the integral is used generally to sum quantities. So I know you probably associate it with area, um, but that just depends on the picture you're looking at. This this there's no there's no function that we're um, graphing necessarily, but we're accumulating a quantity and we're accumulating bushels over time. Sometimes you'll be asked to find uh, the accumulation of some quantity, but you're not actually given the function, you're just given um, some sample data. So for instance, in this case, we're told that a pump connected to a generator um, operates at a varying rate, depending on how much power is being drawn from the generator. Uh, the rate in gallons per minute at which the pump operates is recorded at five minute intervals for one hour, as shown in the table. And then we're asked to find out how many gallons were pumped during that hour. That hour. Now this obviously is going to be an approximation because we don't have all the, the information about this function, but I'm going to call that R of t. So what we what we really want is we want this integral. We want the value of that integral, but we're not going to get it because we don't have the the details of the function. Um, 
and for the hour, since since the units are in minutes, then I'm going to be integrating from zero to sixty. And again, the units here are gallons per minute. And the units on the DT would be small changes in minutes or in time. So we'll be summing up gallons. Now I'm going to put an approximately equal to because we we're going to have to use an approximation method. And I would recommend using the trapezoidal rule since all my intervals are evenly spaced by five minutes. So recall that that just would be um, the, if you sort of imagine, I'm not going to plot everything, but right, imagine um, just the first few values. Your trapezoid would look like this, and this here is your the height of your trapezoid, so which would be 5 over 2. And then we add um, y values, so 58 plus 2 times all those inner y values. So I'm just going to say um, 60 plus 65 plus 64 plus 58 plus 57 plus 55 another 55, 59, 60, 60, 63, those all get doubled and then the last y value gets added, 63. So again, this is the trapezoidal rule. And if you punch that in the calculator, you end up getting 3,582 point five gallons. All right. And so, if you're given a table and asked to and asked for the value of an integral or asked to accumulate, you have to use an approximation method. This time, I use the trapezoidal rule because the intervals were all evenly uh, were all the same, or the subintervals were the same.